morning, everyone. Happy to see you all on Sunday morning again. Uh, today we are having Saad Tabes Pasha, who is pursuing his uh, BTEC first year in IIT. Um, yes. Um, before that, uh, Apurva, can you please um, start our invocation? Powerful we are. Compassionate we are. Genius we are. Adventurous we are. Disruptive we are. Distinctive we are. Beautiful we are. Revolutionaries we are. Empathetic we are. Courageous we are. Grateful we are. Attentive we are. Learners we are. Incitement we are. Rebellious we are. Heartful we are. Inspiring we are. Leaders we are. Zealous we are. Champions we are. Yes, powerful we are. Thank you. That's so powerful, Apurva. So, Tabres, this is our invocation. Like, basically, in any uh, meeting or any start, we basically start with a prayer or something like that, right? So, uh, this is something which we have written for ourselves just as a prayer, um, our powerful way of start. The, actually, um, we have written something else. Uh, this is a new one. So, we started it with you. Thank you. That's, that was nice. Yeah. Um, so uh, before uh, before we get into the actual presentation, uh, tell us about yourself. Like you are the younger one of our youngest top speakers. So firstly, I'll start with my name. I'm Sheikh Saad Tabres Pasha. So I'm pursuing my BTEC at IIT Dhanbad. I've been into many of such kind of projects. I've done with some good enthusiasm. I've been a fellow who has been trying to improve himself every moment. And I take my pride in getting better and learning from the best. So it's all like a journey of never ending experiences going all the way and making, making better memories. That's a nice of you. And yeah, yes, like totally agree to you. And um, before that, how 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 shall I uh, like address you, Tabres? Yeah, it will be fine. <laughs> yeah, actually, I called to Tarun before I uh, started this meeting. Like, how should I yeah, address that's you? Of, that's one of the unique names. You can yeah. call me Tabres. Um, shall we start or shall I start my presentation? Yeah, can I start? Um, we, yes, uh, do you want to start? Yeah, I, I don't know if you say I'll start. Uh, like before that, let, let me tell this all, uh, all our friends, what is it actually about? So Tabres has written a book in his ninth class. And the book name is Odin. Actually, I want to know what is it all about. Like, what, what does the book name mean? So, uh, it's about, uh, you know, it's a celestial body, which uh, it wanders in space. And Odin is a word terminology that relates to the wanderer. He has been, in the Norse mythology, he has been a god who wanders across all the universe, uh, making life and, uh, you know, it's kind of a celestial body which wanders around. So from that, we related it. So is it a god? Like uh, It has to be like that because it's uh, there's no alternate to. I mean, if I give, uh, if I talk about it in detail, you'll get to know it, you know. Okay. It's... okay. Over to you, Tabres. Thank you. So a very good morning to each one of you. Hope everyone is doing fine in these hard times. So firstly, it's an honor to be here. It gives me immense pleasure to share my thoughts about the work I've done a few years ago when I was in ninth standard. So talking about it, we as kids have definitely dreamt of going to space or becoming an astronaut or doing some crazy stuff in space at some point of time in our lives. And I was one of those kids who really wanted to explore space, get to know about it, solve its mysteries at a very young age. So it was really enthusiastic, filled with pride 
and uh, it used to give me a great uh, feel of uh, uh, knowledge you know it gives it uh, it used to give me uh, a thirst of enthusiasm to try to get better and i was one of those kiddos who wanted to explore a vast universe to know its secrets to solve its mysteries so as it uh, as the saying goes everything starts from a minute thought and this thought was implanted in me in my 7th standard by one of my teachers uh, you know i had to give a presentation about space i just went without any preparation but i could deliver such a good uh, presentation that everyone was shocked even myself i shocked myself uh, and uh, after that i thought about it and uh, i finally could make out that it's my desire it's my passion which led me do so you know when you allow something so uh deeply you need not prepare for working on it you will just your heart will drive you through that path so, so in my 7th standard i had that mind your thought implanted in me and that interest grew in me as a, you know from a seed to a tree and i believe on my own saying that it takes a right moment for a thing you deserve to happen it takes a right moment and as such i came across an opportunity to explore space or you know to uh, enhance my interest on space nasa space settlement contest uh, it was uh, you know a contest being run by nasa i think it's also running now they take uh, projects from young fellows you know they take books ideologies you know, they accept it from youngsters because you know, we are the definite future so they take our ideas you know, and uh, they try to build on it or and also talking about this nasa space settlement contest what actually it is so we have to make a project you know on anything and we have to send it to nasa in the form of a book and if they like our idea if they like our uh, thought then they are going to give us a free tour uh, actually it's a really good tour to be there they they give us a chance to visit nasa you know and uh, just look over all the tech all the gadgets all the insisting satellites and all so it was the opportunity i got on which i could uh, work on space so it was about a week we, i and a team of seven had worked and uh, we made this book odin and uh, i call space as a concealed thing you know it's uh, unknown you never know what's going to happen so space uh, talking about it it's a vast thing you never know what's going to come you never know what's going to happen you never know what's awaiting us the more you explore it the more it uh, and uh, enhances you know it enlarges in that way we we were around 13 years old and at that time you know we were like we have to do this we have to explore everything we have to do this we have to just solve all the mysteries and uh, that enthusiasm as a child made us work on it uh, making use of internet making use of the computer whatever we could do we, we did that and put our efforts and it transformed as odin so firstly i'll talk about space so everyone thinks it's a, a boring topic might be some i have come across some good ideas who really think that space is boring but i have also come across some really good ones they just uh, would transform your ideas you uh, <clears throat> they would just uh, you know implant a really good uh, thought process in you and uh, that thought process would help you really go further so <clears throat> space is a combined mass of celestial bodies which we don't know which we are expecting to know and we are waiting to resolve the mysteries so it's uh, an unknown packet of mysteries which we we try to keep resolve every day 
and uh, far better scientists are working on it and uh, there's a lot more to come and we as engineers you know we have a great chance of exploring what is unknown and that's uh, you know it's kind of a thrill you get from doing such things and it really feels great if you can uh, solve any one of a mystery it really good good so i was taken into a team to make a project regarding space and uh, that was odin so firstly i'll talk how we got this idea of odin why odin and what is this odin so actually when we are, were selected uh, to make this project some of ideas came about uh, let's work on voyager one it has been the best project in the whole human history it has traveled across the solar system so we have to work on it yes that was acceptable but not the best and one of our friends stood talking that we have to just divert the voyager one towards the nearest black hole and get track the information so it uh, makes it like a interstellar movie i think many of you have should have watched it that's a really good movie for space enthusiasts so one of my friends suggested that uh, we should just write on voyager one towards a black hole at so and so and one of the very good ideas that uh, came across us was uh, writing about cassini you know cassini is a satellite sent to saturn it was sent to saturn and its course was distracted and uh, it could have crashed one of the moons of saturn and uh, the very important thing was that moon of saturn could have had life on it you know it had some life essence on it so what uh, no. <clears throat> sorry what these nasa scientists did was they crashed cassini into the saturn's atmosphere so that it could not damage the moons of saturn uh, you know that moon is a really special one because it has life essence and uh, scientists probably expect there's some life on it microbial might be but there's life on that moon so later on i and my fellow member proposed an idea you know we are going to make a mess of our earth it's not going to suit us after two centuries or so so we have to find an alternative an alternative so that human race could not go extinct it could still survive until we make earth a better place or we find an alternative planet we have to keep ourselves alive we have to keep this human race alive so we should find an alternative to exist in space but deep in our hearts we knew making earth a better place to live would have been a really good you know an aspect but uh, at that time uh, yeah it was around 4 to 5 years ago uh, we have thought from practicality that uh, we have to find this alternative so that alternative turned out to be odin the wanderer so it's a giant massive celestial structure a giant massive celestial structure with maximum facilities to keep our human race alive for a, a few centuries or so and uh, if it's uh, some of equations were solved it could keep us alive for eternity so in that uh, process of odin the wanderer i had to deal with the part of uh, structure settlement and uh, resources security as well and its location in the solar system so i had to deal with these concepts and the most toughest part was being finding its location you know many of us think if you are going to make a celestial body just put it in earth's orbit or put it around the moon you know it will be same as our atmosphere we can do it better but it's not so putting this uh, odin in our earth's orbit you know might crash it one day on on our earth itself or it might get uh, uh, attracted by sun such that it will just keep going towards the sun and finally crash itself uh, uh, in coming centuries so it was a tough part to do and finally i came out with a solution that uh, we have to opt mars 
so finally you know scientists and many intellects they the work on mars so much because it is a worthy planet and it has some special features which are going to suit human life so we have uh, we have been working on mars it has been our uh, go to thing whenever we had to find a lot an alternative so uh, this mars has two moons naming phobos and deimos and uh, around deimos there is an orbit particular orbit in which uh, the atmosphere i mean atmosphere here means uh, the sun getting energy from sun and uh, you know uh, not getting uh, too much of radiation of the van allen bed we are around and uh, uh, keeping that asteroid belt as far as and as close as we would want it to be and not getting pulled by the jupiter so gravity so mars moon deimos was the solution for this so deimos orbit uh, would have been the best thing we could have sought out at that time uh, it was a really suitable one it uh, you know it could have uh, helped humanity uh, to have a common atmosphere as that of earth so it was a really good uh, a uh, location that we sorted out uh, it took us two days to find it uh, so working on conditions for, uh, so finally we sorted it out that deimos orbit was the right location so now i'll talk about odin so odin is a giant structure it is made up of some toruses so you know here as here the picture depicts so it's uh, made up of five large toruses so and uh, these toruses come uh, can have uh, have the capacity to comprise billions of people many billions of people and with the uh, uh, you know comforts uh, have not been compromised here we have every comfort but the problem that arose was population so we had to keep a check on it or else uh, it uh, would not have suited uh, any human being so a checked population could have lived uh, with great comforts great uh, uh, you know great uh, enthusiasm and great delight there a checked population because we did not compromise on any of the comforts these toruses are so large that each one has its own specialty you know uh, so like the first one might be used for plantations uh, and the second one for rehabilitation third one for living fourth one for uh, you know playing stuff fifth one for uh, resources taken uh, etc so this torus uh, revolves around uh, deimos and uh, so in a suitable orbit and uh, this uh, the main energy source of the the whole system arises in at the center uh, it's and the torus is a centrifuge you know what it means a centrifuge a centrifuge is a kind of thing uh, from any of the angles it can have proper force balance such that it doesn't get distorted so it's a centrifuge so you we have no problem of that but the uh, uh, i have to speak a con of it here that uh, we couldn't sort out the gravity equation the gravity equation was not sorted out because uh, we didn't have a, a lot of idea about that uh, we were kiddos then of course so the gravity equation was not solved and uh, that uh, had an issue with uh, this project but we thought uh, this project uh, yeah, is a future project it would be after two or three centuries it would uh, be initiated so by that time we expected some one to uh, to get over that gravity equation and to solve that so that was the idea we moved forward and uh, that gravity equation solving that would have been a really good one and uh, the right here you'll find a suit so it was specially designed by one of my friends and he really worked hard on that he had a really good pressure check oxygen supply and have to tell you about the backpack in there so he 
thought of uh, he you know he read about hydroponics or something and uh, he just made out a way that uh, uh, each human would have sustained two or three plants and uh, he made some kind of system uh, that this one suit will be powered by three plants and that oxygen will really drive out uh, will drive uh, uh, the whole body and would uh, just keep that human inside uh, really alive so as i told earlier mars has two moons phobos and deimos and uh, around this deimos is our orbit so here uh, the whole toruses are powered by solar power uh, solar energy uh, we have you know the all the outer surfaces of these toruses are made of solar panels and they drive a whole power system and that power is stored in the middle uh, the mid rib what i call it mid rib and it holds all the energy and it's the whole energy source from the top to bottom and uh, now i'll talk about that uh, uh, suits and uh, this uh, torus so at this point here around the demos we have some maximum radiation up up yeah uh, it's a uh, maximum radiation is obtained at that point van allen belt being one of that uh, key contributors and around jupiter's radiation was also sorted out at that point so that uh, orbit of demos who had uh, that uh, radiation availability which we could have, we could uh, make use of we converted we found a way to convert that radiation and uh, we transformed it into the maximum electrical energy and that electrical energy would uh, drive the whole torus uh, uh, electricity light system and uh, all so not just solar energy we could also rely on the radiation and make use of it to convert into electrical energy and uh, make the maximum of it so that was uh, another key aspect of uh, choosing this demos orbit and uh, the main and the most important thing i dealt out was resources you know on earth we have been you know destroying it we have been uh, interrupting its uh, balance for these resources and uh, we would uh, really require them because uh, our technology asks for these resources so even after those couple of centuries we calculated that we will definitely need resources so where can we get that from so that was the question then there's just a solution ahead of us uh, these resources could have been easily found around that asteroid belt between mars and jupiter that asteroid belt has a uh, numerous asteroids uh, with uh, humongous minerals etc as uh, predicted and uh, we could uh, grasp many of that uh, asteroid uh, i will term that thing it's called asteroid mining so a uh, week uh, from that uh, torus with that celestial body traveling on to these asteroids is just a simple task just take a spaceship and just go there and the with the tech we have we could easily make use of uh, whatever we want so asteroid mining was the main concept and the technology now is really enough to mine an asteroid extract its uh, minerals and uh, we anticipated that uh, when uh, the technology right now is sufficient to for asteroid mining it could have gone eco friendly by that uh, coming centuries so it was a really good uh, concept to work on asteroid mining and then also we had mars in our uh, uh, in our four view mars uh, it uh, is a really good uh, uh, planet that comprises of minerals like uh, mostly iron you will found it there ferrous and uh, this uh, ferrous uh, can be maximally utilized and uh, there was a concept at that time that uh, this uh, ferrous ions can be used uh, to convert or just uh, help in the growing of plants i suppose i don't exactly remember it but uh, one of my team member he worked on that uh, making use of this iron uh, he just uh, made some project in a, a human mutation i have to mention this so he worked on uh, improvising humans who could uh, sustain the atmosphere the conditions over there 
he worked on that human mutation uh, he took that biological aspect and uh, uh, that's one saddest part I I'll tell you later so he worked on this uh, making use of this iron ion getting it into some body and uh, transforming some humans so I would finally say that resources were all around us just we have to find a way to make use of them and uh, asteroids mars uh, many planets over there really would have helped in this uh, uh, mining concept asteroid mining getting all the resources collected so here's what that i was talking about van allen belt so it's the radiation region around our earth uh, it has it depicts so we thought to make use of this radiation by go waste so this radiation could power many of the sources uh, we anticipated that at that time this uh, we could make use of this radiation uh, get by uh, transform it into some form of energy and uh, really make use of it so that uh, uh, it uh, it would power humanity to eternity because uh, we know radiation is all around us and uh, we just uh, live in that uh, that atmosphere but we don't make use of it properly so there was an idea to make use of this radiation and if it had uh, really succeeded i would say then definitely we would have made it to that uh, nasa there because uh, uh, no one has ever uh, found a way to make use of this radiation convert it into energy so that was a uh, it was like a really breathtaking moment for us because we had thought of it and uh, we were working on it but our age had limited us because we had not much concepts of physics then and uh, we in depth we didn't knew about that so it was a disappointing part yet a uh, really uh, a good part on which we could uh, take pride uh, the key aspect uh, we failed i would uh, proudly say that we failed in finding an alternative which uh, would give this enormous oxygen for keeping this human life uh, uh, alive to the eternity oxygen was a really key aspect what we thought of these fuel cells would have powered us uh, most of the oxygen but it would not have been sufficient for sure i knew that straight away because we have to find an oxygen alternative so there was an idea that we have to make a separate probe that would contain these plants and uh, the soil should have we should have collected from in depth oceans uh, yes they are polluted but the soil under is uh, really fertile that it could sustain these plants and we have to collect oxygen from these uh, plants which uh, uh, we could take in separate uh, probe but the thing was if we had to do that we have to make a torus larger than the actual odin so it had to be larger than actual odin and we had to collect that uh, amount of uh, soil and uh, that didn't seem happening because we have already polluted most of the earth's soil and uh, whatever fertile is left under the oceans the river beds so we didn't feel that right and uh, we also anticipated that the uh, fuel cells would have done it but again we had to leave it that uh, future will find some technology a centuries are coming so oxygen alternative could have been found we thought of that and uh, we mm, we just uh, went forward but uh, the but the way we sorted out was uh, our key concept was these fuel cells would have helped us and we could have carried some breeds of plants which uh, could have sustained a uh, individual human being not on a whole uh, they had to keep those uh, space suits on for that and that was a really key point so in this way i dealt with resources on asteroid mining and the mass mining uh, i dealt with the location being the orbit of deimos uh, it was a suitable location to have and uh, i dealt with this uh, structure of uh, toruses and uh, that turned out to be a really good one until the gravity equation was uh, not included so when the gravity equation was included uh, we could have got that all around but uh, we couldn't do that that was one of the failures so i'm not a guy who just uh, focuses on its pros but also i'd speak about its cons so the place where we failed was first thing oxygen supply was uh, not uh, 
sorted out properly because uh, we had to keep on the space suits to keep uh, yourself alive or else uh, no matter you could have gone dead in a, a day or two so we couldn't uh, sort out that thing next thing was uh, you know maintaining this gravity equation that uh, we our ages had limited us to and because we didn't have the concepts of uh, physics that properly and the final thing uh, was uh, you know i had in that uh, so in the deep of my heart i knew that making an earth a better place to live is far better than finding an alternative so but the thing was uh, some projects were already made on this uh, thing that making earth a better place but uh, nasa has already ignored those because uh, they don't find a proper practical human ideas which uh, practicality was missing in those projects because uh, we who are polluting and uh, not uh, making use of uh, i mean not maintaining regulations on what we are doing now how can the future just uh, come and settle this out they were thinking of that nasa really had a bad opinion on that of coming from students uh, so we opted out of that so in this way odin was a really uh, it was a really good uh, project to be a part of and uh, involving i as i earlier said uh, i mentioned human mutations and that uh, point was uh, definitely unacceptable and nasa they had really strike an our project off uh, on this point human mutations uh, biological concept that didn't go our way but uh, what we take pride of is the idea of which uh, we went forward we look to do it so finally i have to say that is every guy has some dream uh, he definitely has his own ideology and thought process to achieve it so we being fine engineers are our country's future and human race future so we have to make our plans work and ensure that our country and the human race can improve using our work uh, we may not have been successful but uh, a really interesting thing about these projects was the project that got selected had solved the oxygen issue so i really felt good that uh, uh, our generation you know our friend uh, my friend was there in that project he just told me later on that they had solved that oxygen equation they got selected but actually they didn't to go to nasa and i don't know the reason for that uh, but they solved that oxygen issue and i really felt a good for having that friend and knowing that uh, he just got out with that oxygen issue and uh, the thing were the thing is we may not live long you know we may not live to the eternity but our works and our thoughts and ideology will definitely do so if we are on a right track uh, for improvising our lives we are going to definitely live long uh, as of our thoughts etc so let's make it happen let's work putting our fine efforts let's not wait for the tech to develop let's develop the tech we want you actually at that age we were thinking that tech would develop tech would develop but now being an engineer uh was uh, getting my education in the, in the prestigious institutes of india i really feel that now i have to make a move i have to make the tech i want i have to develop the tech i wish i had in waiting for it to come in future so that has been my primary ideology now to get the tech what i like what i wish what i desire so there might be different dreams but the passion and ent- enthusiasm to achieve it is all the same so different dreams different aspects different ideologies but whole and sole result would be the evolution of human race and that would have been a great part to see i am the only person who stands between my dream and myself i say this i keep saying this to myself so i always try to get better every moment and rise beyond so that i can achieve what i love and i have been trying to solve the issues on which i failed so that uh, it gives me a, a slight feel of uh, you know positivity and a great uh, joy in uh, you know getting over the things i failed 
it really gives me a, a sight of happiness a sight of delight so finally i am ending this uh, thank you everyone and let's be the future we desire today remember guys near future is not so far and let's be the future let's make the future the way we want want it to be thank you wow <laughs> thank you the best i should say this to you shout out loud i never go is kind of i think everyone i think everyone should uh, turn off their uh, mics and really clap yes <laughs> thank you thank you thank you it's like Pleasure. you know thinking about something really far of you in ninth standard i really don't know what i was doing in my ninth standard <laughs> and you know like so many things there are there um, so and so you proposed an idea to place an odin right yeah oh my god this is so big <laughs> and you you found out the place to place it you, you it thought about everything you yeah, are making use of uh, the sources i had was a really good thing i made use of you know internet facility was there all every time around us and uh, just we had to make use of that and yes. uh, proper management uh, helped me do so and uh, had some good guidance as well so uh, physics enthusiasm enthusiasm towards that subject is what really drove me and uh, it was a really nice of that i could solve that location how did you found that uh, actually i had i had been working on mars actually i was uh, you know scientists had written some uh, key works on mars and uh, suddenly i found out that deimos was uh, a really unusually shaped moon of mars i just uh, suddenly got interest on it and uh, i started i asked my lecturer sir what is this uh, moon of this what is the atmosphere around it so then uh, we just uh, went on to the internet we uh, read the uh, professor from um, i exactly don't know the university but he wrote a work on deimos and phobos and uh, he wrote that the, he he actually wrote that point that uh, around deimos there is uh, such an orbit irregular orbit that's not a proper orbit actually that's an elliptical orbit in a, some distorted path and uh, that orbit really had uh, some essence of uh, having some great solar radiation and uh, minimum harmful radiation and uh, it uh, really could have suited our lives so, you know sunrise sunset etc would have been the same as that of our earth so that work of that professor actually helped me uh, and that was the thing so and he's making the best use of internet yeah uh, his name is uh, richard keys richard keys i said okay really good work. Uh, like can you tell uh, Like, can you brief it out? Like, what is Taurus actually? So, Taurus is a donut. Just uh, imagine it as a donut, uh, a circular uh, ho- structure, hollow inside. And uh, uh, if you draw mm, what we say, uh, an inner radius around it, it could have been a centrifuge around that. Just take like, a circle. I can, rem- I can, I can remember the like uh, the picture you have shown. Like, what's the use of that? the use of it is maximum area uh, the maximum volume you can get over other structures volume and the capacity to hold humans is maximum in those structures and suitable i suppose i have uh, you watched interstellar movie in that movie in the last they show that uh, this kind of a structure actually uh, a boy hits a baseball and it goes up hitting a window a house over them so it's a kind of centrifuge that uh, in that movie especially it was really uh, it was really perfectly shown we could uh, just uh, show the out outlines and out structures but interstellar movie it was uh, you know it was for us uh, a bible which we counted on because our idea was really from related to that so it was for a bible for us and this torus actually also had come from that move because we found that centrifuge that concept of centrifuge and uh, 
the boy hits that baseball and it goes hits a house over that was a really interesting concept we had looked into and from that this concept of torus is arise and it's a simple donut hollow inside 